Evening folks, Jan Sverre here again. Uh, I have uh, yet more uh, Myford uh, baits to restore. In this uh, case, uh, what you see here is a Myford Super 7 headstock, the MK1 version, the old one with the uh, oil reservoir. And um, my intention is to show you how I um, adjust the spindle. The adjustment is just the same on the newer um, one where you have the wick feed. And then um, components here, uh, of course the spindle, and then um, some of the sleeves and the gear and the nut, plus the rear thrust bearing and castellated nuts. These are called castellated nuts, as I learned. And of course you have the um, build gear and pulley, but these are, uh, and a couple of woodruff keys, but these uh, play no matter here. Um, this headstock I already have uh, the castellated nuts and the bearing assembly inside because that's convenient for me when I should show. And then you also need uh, this type of uh, spanner to adjust. And uh, first of all, this, this procedure is described here in the Myford Super 7 uh, user manual. And uh, there's a better picture here than what I have uh, managed to do there. But anyhow. So, um, I try to simplify this uh, procedure as much as possible for myself to understand and uh, I think there's a kind of a mystery or at least some, uh, some um, uh, one uh, thinks this is difficult but reality not, at least the, the principles are, are, are pretty simple. But I like to decompose uh, a problem into several sub-problems and uh, here at least you have two uh, sub-tasks, namely the uh, rear bearing and then uh, how to set the preload here and then the front bearing how to set the radial clearance and um, both are done by this assembly here because uh, the bearing preload are set by the inner uh, ring and the uh, axial movement is possible by moving uh, the spindle to the front or rear thereby also setting the clearance here. The arrangement uh, on the Super 7 is such that you have a pair of what's called angular contact uh, bearings. Uh, it's uh, really the um, 75, no, 7205B. Um, you can have them in different, config, uh, different uh, uh, tolerances and uh, and the variants, but at least that's the one I have used, and this is the same as here. And then these are mounted in what is called a back, what is called a back-to-back -back configuration. That means that you have the two outer um, rings, uh, the fat sides of the, those, of the inside, pushing against um, a spacer in between here and clamped in between two knots which you can then use to both uh, set the load on these outer rings so to speak to fixate them and then to move the whole assembly axially. Um, the preload on those however is set by the this also then when you have clamped the outer is set by the inner rings and this is shown here if I uh, of course you have the bull gear and the pulley but I avoid putting them on so I only use the uh, let's say the thrust shoulder here this uh, diameter reduction to put the sleeve on here and then I enter this whole stack of uh, then this was not really necessary anyhow but these ones at least and then the gear that also functions as a distance sleeve, and then the nut. And when you have all this together, you can set the preload on the inner rings here, on the bearings. You tighten this, and then quite firmly. Well, and then you, I, I will show how to measure later. At least then this, then you have set the pre preload on the bearings here, and uh, that's how I do it at least when I st start off. I do this uh, uh, in the ring snug or tight and then I measure how much um, distance uh, uh, movement 
or an axle movement I want, let's say um, two to five hundredths of a millimeter, when I load it from the tailstock end. And this needs to be at least not bigger uh, by any number, should be ideally uh, equal or less than the radial clearance because when you move this in, you will also then contact with the front bronze bearing here. And of course, if the axle, so actually the spindle in axle movement is not stiff enough to take up uh, uh, the, the forces, this will contact here and then you will have a spindle that is stuck in the front bearing, which is of course not ideal. Um, so I try to minimize this clearance. So I set this by the knot there, and then this is pretty rotated, of course, anyhow. And then late next is that I move the spindle rearwards to the rear. Let me just take off this. So entering the sleeve first, the sleeve. And then the um, bearings are, of course, then with uh, already there with the nut, nuts, and then so then I pressed against the shoulder here, and I insert the gear, which I act as a spacer, and the nut here. And of course, um, I should probably have a zero here that should have this uh, somewhat tight, but at least allowing it to be set to the right as much as to make this free. So I adjust the knot here, which here forces the inner ring together. And um, then this should be free to move with the bearing preload the, on the rear here, set by this arrangement on the inside. And then not sure if you can see that, but then with this slack enough so that they can move, I will force the spindle to the rear by adjusting this nut. So I'm not sure if you can see, but this moves the spindle to the rear. And here I shall be able to move it back. Until it's stuck. Now it's stuck, and then slack off 15 to 20 degrees here. Then you should be able to feel that is free. So, and now tighten this nut to fit. So, and then you can measure the, um, the radial clearance here also up and down. And this should also be like two to five hundreds, I've learned. So, static uh, rear bearing here, preload set by the inner ring, also then snug on the outer ring, but at least then moving the whole assembly to the left by this um, setting this uh, clearance, you have then the correct running spindle. Um, Assembling the spindle again, um, taking out the spindle from the Super 7 headstock and you just use a pin of some kind to hold down this felt. Like so. And then I can easily put the uh, spindle in again. And then the reassembly of the spindle. First, remember the Woodruff key, put that in, and then the adapter it goes into the rear bearing assembly, and then follows the back gear assembly, the bull gear and the pulley, and of course remember to put in the belt. And then you can enter the spindle, which is of course simplified when you hold down the felt, as I've done. And then rotate the spindle until uh, the Woodruff key enters. There. 
and then force the spindle back and then you have the set screw shall be mounted I just mount it loosely first and then of course uh, comes the gear and the uh, nut but first then this uh, Woodruff key here also just finding the position entering it I use a plier, is that what it's called, to force it down and of course uh, next is the, um, the gear with also this spacer you can call it just finding the radial position for that and then in it goes a little bit more tricky than what it seemed to be but at least it's in position now I have to reposition the spindle a little bit rearwards usually there is a bit of fighting here to enter this uh, fully and then the, the nut with the ground surface to the inner side I just have to open it a little bit uh, the set screw there is a bit tight and then it's just a matter of turning the spindle and rotating to get that uh, fully home and after this the real procedure begins with uh, the adjustment part at least all the parts are in so first you adjust the knot there behind there uh, with a loose a little bit loose uh, on the castellated nuts so that you can adjust the um, the preload so to speak the inner rings here with this nut at the rear so that the bearings come together so as already ex explained the adjustment is such that you first of all you move this uh, pair of uh, nuts back and forth I mean snug them up so that they are tight towards one another and then you move them axially and this sets the radial clearance in front and then I start moving the spindle backwards the castellated nuts uh, clockwise or to the left the same way until the spindle is stuck there and then it's a matter of giving it somewhat 15 20 degrees and just uh, snug up the rear one of these castellated nuts and then the right one 15 to 20 degrees there and again with the leftmost and then it's free so you have to play with this a bit may have to repeat this a few times this procedure with setting the 15 degrees and tightening this and also remember to tighten the set screw this and the front where the bolt gear is we're not the machines and running it later at high speed then measure the temperatures of the bearings, especially here then. And then the axle clearance I set this way. Just move in the spindle and then set a zero. Like so. And then move in the tailstock. Fasten and then push. And then pushing as hard as I can with the tailstock. You can see then the amount of clearance I get actually.
and the radial clearance is uh, measured on top of a faceplate here just by lifting the spindle and I get uh, uh, about yeah, four or five hundredths of a millimeter clearance lifting quite hard up.